Detroit. Welcome to the Who Told You Show. I am Pastor Shirley Horden, and I am the pastor of God's Way Deliverance Ministry, located at 17700 Northland Park Court in Southfield, Michigan. And I'm also the founder of Nurturing Women, which is a women's ministry. And this been women's ministry is, a uh, matter of fact, it is founded on Titus 2, 3 through 5. All of a sudden, I got a little tongue tied there. But anyway, it's a women's ministry, and God has truly blessed this ministry. I am also here today to let you know that I am your host, and uh, today of all days, we're going to uh, give uh, allegiance also to uh, Dr. Marjorie Wilson, who is the founder of Peace Dove International Ministries. And the Who Told You show is happens to be her baby. She gave birth to this ministry. And I want to say today, I want to also thank her and I want to honor her also because she's also just graduated with her doctorate degree. And anyone who has gone to school know how hard it is to get a doctorate. You know you work for it. You earn it. And so I just want to say to her today and give a shout out to her and say congratulations on a job well done. And I also want to give a shout out to my sponsor, which is Parish Home Health Care. It is under the leadership of uh, Diane Parrish and her daughter Renisha and they are located in uh, matter of fact two locations one is in Berkeley Michigan the other one is in Toledo Ohio I just want to say thank you so much for being my sponsor the who told you show can be seen every week it is a weekly broadcast on Comcast Channel 20 via the Bell Global Network from 1030 to 11 o'clock. And you can see me every second Sunday. My name, again, is Pastor Shirley Horton. And today we're going to start this out with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give glory and honor to you today. And I want to thank you for your love and for your mercy and for your goodness towards me today. And Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to come before your people today. And I thank you, Father, because I rest in you today knowing that you have a word in due season for your people. And I thank you, Father, that as your word goes forth today, it will fall upon good ground. And it will reap, it will produce, it will will come forth a hundredfold in the lives of your people. Father, I just thank you today and I praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you are in control today. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the one that sits up on the throne today. And Father, I give you glory and I give you honor that it is you that works my mouth. It is you that puts the words in my mouth that you would have me to minister unto your people today. And I thank you, Father, that I will say only that that you give me to say. Do only that that you give me to do. I will add nothing to, nor will I take anything away from your word this day in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. All glory and honor, it all belongs to you. Praise God. Today, uh, as I was before the Lord, today you know what we're going to do. Today we're going to talk a little bit on obedience. And that is something that, you know, if you look in James, James 1 and 22, the Bible tells us that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And he said when we don't do that, we deceive our own selves. That's the word. That's not what I said that is not what anyone else has to say. That's what God has to say. That we are to, we can't just be a hearer only. We have to be a doer. And so today, really, I want to ask you, how much of the word are you doing? That is my question to you. And even as I minister today, and as the word of the Lord goes forth, I want you to begin to see yourself. And I want you to ask yourself just exactly how much of the word are you doing? Uh, also, you know, um, as I was reading today, I want us in our Bibles today, I want us to go over to 1 Samuel 5, uh, 15 and chapter 1. And if you look at, we're to, in this year, I'm sure that you all Bible scholars, I'm sure that you have read your word and I'm sure you know all about Saul. And what we forget sometimes is there are consequences to our disobedience. 
And sometimes we just seem to think, well, okay, Lord, I did this. And, you know, uh, the Lord said go left. Well, you make a half turn. You know, you don't completely make the whole complete left turn. And we just seem to think it's okay. You know, we we, we uh, tell ourselves, well, God is a God of love. You know, he will forgive us. He will have mercy. But, you know, hey, not forever. And so we sometimes forget that there are consequences. You know, when I was uh, growing up as a child, when my parents told me to do something and I didn't do it, there was consequences. I knew that if I did not do what they told me to do, I was in trouble. Today, when I look at the kids today, and there just does not seem to be any consequences. So anyway, we're going to go to the Bible first. And in, uh, like I said before, 1 Samuel 15. And as you know, in this, in the first verse, Samuel is being sent. He has been anointed. He sent to, to Saul to anoint him for a job. God has given him an assignment. Saul's, I mean, Samuel's assignment is to anoint Saul and to tell him what thus saith the Lord God. Saul's assignment is to carry out the commandments and the order of the Lord. And when you look in first, uh, the first uh, verse here, it says, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you to be king over his people over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. And as we go on down, uh, we're going to skip around a little bit for uh, the sake of time. In the third verse it says, he told um, Saul, to go and to smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. He said, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. Everything. That's, that was the assignment to Saul. Okay. Now we're going to go down a little bit. And it said, now Saul came to the city of Amalek and he laid wait in the valley. That's the fifth verse. We're going to go over a little bit. And uh, we're going to go down to uh, chapters uh, to verse 7. It says, Saul smote the Amaleks from Havilah until thou comest to Shur that is over against Egypt. He took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive. And he utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vow and refuge that they destroyed. Now isn't it something? What didn't nobody want, they destroyed that. But they took the best for themselves. Okay. Then comes the word of the Lord to Samuel. And the Lord was grieved. And even Samuel was grieved. And the Lord said he repented. He, he wished he had never even, even uh, uh, set Saul to be king. Now, you know, that's the bad thing. Because I would hate for the Lord to not be pleased with me. I want him to be pleased with me. And if you want God to be pleased with you, then that means you have to obey. We must obey. We must do everything that God tells us to do it and in the way that he tells us to do it. Okay, we're going to come on down. Samuel, now he goes to Saul. And he said unto him, I'm in the 13th verse, Blessed be thou of the Lord. Here goes Saul. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, well, well, in other words, what is all this bleeding of the sheep that I hear in my ears? And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. And what did Saul do? Saul said, in the 15th verse, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people 
spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Now I want to ask you today. I just read his assignment, what he was supposed to do. Now is this what God told Saul to do? I really don't think so. He said, so Samuel said unto Saul, stay. And I will tell you what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. So Saul, in other words, Samuel had to remind Saul of what God said. He said, and, the, and he told him, look at verse 18. The Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? What make us think we can just do anything and God doesn't see us? You know, we just seem to think, yet and still we, we preach it, we teach it, how God is an all-seeing God. How he knows all, sees all. But for some reason, we seem to think that he don't see our mess. Amen. Okay, we're going to go to verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Did you see? And have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalekite, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Now he's still confessing that he obeyed the Lord. He said, but the people, passing the blame, took of the spoil the sheep and the oxen, the chief of the things which would have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And in verse 22, Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as is in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. Now was it worth it? I'm asking you. Was it worth it? You lost the kingdom. Was it worth it for your disobedience? And then you're going to pass it off on the people. And you're going to say it was the people. And finally in 24 he said, Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words. Because I feared the people and I obeyed their voice. He feared the people and he obeyed their voice. And the kingdom was rent out of his hands that day. Saul lost everything. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You know... Oh, in Luke's and uh, chapter 6, 46, the Holy Spirit, I mean, God is saying, why even call me Lord, Lord? And then you don't do the things which I say. And you know, we do. We want to, Lord, you know this, Lord, this, Lord, this. But yet and still, we walk around obedient, disobedient. We will not do what God has commanded us to do. And we forget, as I said before, God sees everything. There is nothing hid from him. He sees the motive. He sees the intent of the heart. And regardless of what excuse you can come up with, God already knows. He knows why you did it. 
but it was because of the wickedness of Saul's heart. He was wicked. And he disobeyed God. And he did not do what God had told him to do. And I am saying to you today. And I want to say especially to leaders today. Leaders. I don't care what capacity of leadership that you are in today. Hear me today. It, you better hear what God is saying to you. And obey what he is saying to you. People are going to come. And they're going to tell you. Oh maybe we should do it this way. Maybe we should do it that way. Uh, this or uh, uh, whatever. But you better know that you know. What God has said unto you. And follow his instructions to the letter. Time out for trying to please man. Man. You know, man doesn't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. And I am here to tell you today, if you are one of those that uh, you are so anxious trying to please everybody, then you need to repent and you need to ask God to forgive you and you need to order your steps in the way of the Lord. While there is yet time, obedience, is better than sacrifice. There is nothing in this world. Or nobody. That is worth your soul. Nobody. Nobody. And there are things today. That God is speaking to us. And we got to be, obey. We have got to be in position. God wants to bless you. More than you want to be blessed. God wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you that you don't even have room enough to receive. He has not forgotten about you. And some of you, you are sitting there today and you seem to think that God has forgotten about you. Not so. But some of you, you have gotten off on the wrong path. You have gotten in to disobedience. And you know, once, I mean, the Holy Spirit, many years ago, one of the things God told me, he said, Shirley, he said, disobedience ties my hands. He said, as much as I love you, and as much as I want to move, and as much as I want to work on your behalf, he said, I can't do it because God cannot bless disobedience. He said, but obedience unties my hands. Obedience looses me. It frees me. And then I'm able to move and I'm able to work on your behalf. That regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance, when I am obedient to do what God has told me to do, He's got my back. He's got my back. He's got me. I have placed him in the situation. I have placed him in the circumstance. And I can trust him and know that he is going to do exactly what he said he would do. That he is not going to fail me. He's not going to let me down. What did the word over in Malachi? He said, prove me and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. You don't even have room enough to receive. Sometimes we associate that only to money. But obedience is what opens up the windows of heaven. And it causes God to move and to work on your behalf. And I know you want the best. I know you want everything that God has for you. I don't want to get to heaven. And he showed me around. And he takes me into a room with all of these gifts, all of the things that I was praying for, all of the things that I was believing God to do for me. And he tells me, all of this was yours. All of this was yours. But you just didn't trust me to do it. You just didn't believe me to do it. You never ever got in that place of complete, total obedience where I could just pour out on you. You know, there's difference in a shower and a real pouring 
I mean, when when it a shower, you might get a little wet. But when a pour, when it pours down rain, you get soaked. And I want to get soaked in God's blessings. I want to be just soaked. Whether when I walk, you know when you get really soaked, you know when you walk, even your shoes begin to squish. That's what I want God to do for me. But he said, it is for those who will do the word. Not just hear the word, but those that will do the word. Do the word. I am admonished you today. Don't just be a hearer, but be a doer of the word. Sometimes, you know, we can tell, oh, I hear God say this, I hear God. But how much of, of what you heard are you doing? How much? I'm asking you. What have God told you to do that you're not doing? What has God told you to do that you know you should be walking in it by now? Last month, what did I say? Last month, the Holy Spirit said that this was the year of the woman. That means whatever it is that God has told you to do. And man, I'm not leaving you out. But whatever it is that God has told you to do. This is your due season. This is your due season. God has given you. An open door. He's given you a pass. To step out on his word. And to trust him to do what he has called you to do. You know. Uh, last year I graduated with my bachelor's degree and that was an accomplishment for me that at 60 something years old I went back to school and I had not been to school since I graduated from high school and I graduated with my bachelor's degree and I'm working on my master's praise God but let me tell you I knew that I knew that I knew that I was supposed to go to school. And God just blessed for those four years. And when those four years was over, I said, okay, I'm through with school. Don't want no more school. I've had enough of school. But God, nope, uh-uh. He wanted me to go back. And so I obeyed and I went back to school. But I knew that it was not for me to go back to the school that I just graduated from. I knew that that door was closed. And it was time now to move on. That God had something else in mind. And so I found myself. I went to this uh, other school, a friend of mine, as a matter of fact, Minister Carla, which will be ministering, uh, I think, next week. She and I, we went to this other school. God opened up the door for, and provided for us to go. And by being obedient and during that time, I'm telling you, there were so many people. Now you need to come back here. You need to come back to this school. You need to come. But I knew that I knew that I knew. That I was not to go back to that school. That I was to go to this particular school. God opened up the door for us to go. And I'm telling you here now. I sit here today before you. In front of this television. I'm sitting here today because I obeyed the voice of God. That I just did not hear what he was saying but I obeyed I'm here to tell you I didn't ask to be on TV I did not seek one day to be on TV God just opened up the windows of heaven and poured out a blessing that I even today I still every once in a while I have to pinch myself because there are some things you know that you know that you know. It was only but by the grace of God. 
when I came here with uh, Dr. Marjorie, she asked Carl and I to meet her over here at, the, uh, at this station. So we thought we were coming to help her. We didn't even know why we were coming. We sit here, and the next thing I know, Minister Bell said, well, you all have a TV program. And I wish you could have been in the car with us on the way back home. Because there was just, a, our faces was nothing but shock and amazement. Wondering, how in the world did this happen? And I sit here out of obedience. God did this. Not Shirley. Didn't knock on anybody's door. Didn't come not one day saying, put me on TV. Because if you had asked me, I would have said no. But one thing I have learned about God. If he say that you can do something, you can do it. There is so much more to all of us than meets the eye. If we will but just obey and do what he say. God wants to bless us. How many doors of opportunity have God opened for you? And because you couldn't see it, you didn't step into that door. How many blessings have you missed out on? Because you heard, but you didn't obey. I had to trust God. There was nobody to train us, nobody to teach us, nobody to tell us exactly what to do. We were told just come in here, sit down, and look in the little black box. And I had to talk to myself. And I had to tell myself and remind myself of the things that God had promised me. Surely, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. It is not by my power, not by my might, but it is by the spirit of the true and the living God. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. I'm not looking at me. I'm looking at him. And as I've said before, I had to remind myself of the same thing that I have sat here in this chair and told you month after month after month. Surely, God is not setting you up for failure. He is setting you up for success. And you can do what he said that you can do. And I want to say to you today, you can do what God said you can do. I am Pastor Shirley Wharton. And before I sign off, if you don't know Jesus, I'm asking you today, all you have to do is repent. And just say, God, I'm sorry for my ways. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Save me and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. If you need to get in contact with me, 313-838-4877, Shirley Horton, which is uh, at att.net. I want to say to you, be blessed today. And remember, don't be just a hearer of the word only, but a doer. God bless. My, my soul says thank you. My, my, my soul says thank you.